In the last couple of chapters, we've been pretty focused on cells and what's going on inside of them, but it's important to remember that in the human body, cells are not the only thing that's present in the human body. There's a lot of space between cells, and the thing that connects them all together in large part is water. And so what we're going to start uh, this chapter off with is just considering sort of the fluid distribution throughout the human body. If we think about all of the water that exists in the body, about two-thirds of the water in our bodies, or about 67%, exists within cells, so inside of cells. The other third exists outside of the cells in the space surrounding. That's called um, the extracellular environment. Extra meaning outside of. And then if we just look at the breakdown of that water that's outside of the cells, uh, where is it at? So about 20% about of that is in the blood plasma. And the remaining 80% is in interstitial spaces. This is talking about the spaces between cells, uh, but not in the blood. So essentially what this interstitial fluid does is it provides some sort of a connection. It's a, a connection between the cells and the blood plasma. And there has to be a lot of transport that takes place across that interstitial fluid or through that interstitial fluid. So that's in large part going to be what our focus is on in this chapter, is how do things get transported through that interstitial fluid and then make their way into cells. The interstitial space consists of not just water, but it also has other things. There's a whole matrix of things that exist in the spaces between cells. And we'd like to talk about the extracellular matrix in terms of a couple of things. So there are protein fibers there. Those are present in large part just for providing some structure and some support, right? Imagine, um, so if we just look at this picture, here we've got a layer of epithelial cells and down here we have a little blood capillary, so there's blood plasma flowing through there. And then this is the space that we're kind of focused in on in this chapter. This is the, um, the extracellular space, and we're going to be considering transport across here. Okay, so um, if this if this interstitial space did not have protein fibers, right, if it didn't have any sort of support structure, that would mean this is a very weak sort of sort of area. This would mean anytime you brushed up against something, your skin would totally like slide in one direction. That would just be nasty. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of support structure that's in here. We've got protein fibers. We talked about collagen earlier in the class when we were reviewing connective tissue. And then there's also um, a lot of gel-like material, gel-like ground substance. And what this consists of, in large part, are glycoproteins and also proteoglycans. And both of these, essentially these are both protein molecules that have modifications. Remember glycoproteins, this means we have a carb group attached to the protein. Uh, what these do, in large part, these are molecules that are attractive to water. Water tends to stick nearby these substances and so this helps to maintain sort of the more uh, fluid environment of the extracellular matrix. There are also some proteins to be aware of called integrins. Integrins are proteins that connect the cell's cytoskeleton um, so inside of a cell makes a connection between the inside of the cell and the extracellular matrix and it helps to anchor them in place, provide a physical connection from the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell. So this extracellular environment, this allows a few different things. Um, for one thing, if we just think about like what do these cells need and what is this providing, right? There's gonna be a lot of nutrients flowing through this blood capillary and there has to be a way for those nutrients to make it over to these cells. So the extracellular environment allows for transportation. It allows things to flow across um, nourishing substances flow in this direction and waste products from the cells flow in this direction. They diffuse, we'll be talking about diffusion in a little bit, um, but diffuse back over into the blood capillary. This extracellular environment also provides a means by which cells can communicate with each other. So one cell over here, perhaps it will secrete something, some sort of a chemical regulator or some sort of a messenger molecule, and then that molecule can, can travel through the extracellular space and make its way over to another cell. And so this extracellular space is allowing for communication to take place.